Hi, I'm Bruce from SNS Cycle. In this video, we're going to take a look at solving some special jetting problems that you may encounter when jetting SNS Super E and G carbs, specifically problems with exhaust systems. This information also applies to our older carbs, such as the Super B and D. If you're new to carb tuning, I'd recommend that you watch the first two videos in this series for some additional background. You have to understand that your motorcycle is a system of interdependent parts that all affect the performance of the bike. I'm sure we've all talked to guys who tell you that their carb isn't running very well. Well, you just have to wonder how the rest of the bike was running. Everything has to work or none of it will work. So if your engine has a problem and installing a new carburetor doesn't help, you have to conclude that the carb wasn't the problem. Conversely, if you install a new exhaust system and your engine suddenly doesn't run right, logic would suggest that maybe those pipes weren't a good choice. That brings us to our main topic, which is exhaust systems. If you're running your bike on the drag strip, drag pipes might be a good choice. They make really good high RPM power, but they're really not the hot ticket on the street. Aside from the objections possibly raised by your neighbors or the local constabulary vis-a-vis -vis excessive exhaust noise, etc., drag pipes typically don't perform well in the mid-RPM range, where you do the majority of your street riding. But enough talk, let's demonstrate. This is a 1999 Harley-Davidson Dynaglide with a set of SNS Performance slip-on mufflers. We'll be using our Dynojet 250i to help us with our tuning and to demonstrate the results. Let's do a dyno pull and see what we get. The Dynojet 250i is an invaluable tool that can tell you just how effective a performance enhancement is, and that can go either way. This is a pretty good looking dyno run for a street bike. Wide, relatively flat torque curve with good torque in the mid-range. Let's see how much better it runs with drag pipes. Now those are some badass pipes. Let's see how much power we get. What's up with this? We lost a lot of mid-range torque. It even started to misfire. This is a typical problem with drag pipes. There's even a name for it. It's called drag pipe sag. Some straight through mufflers can be nearly as bad. We actually expected to get more high RPM power from these pipes, but life is full of surprises. So what's causing the dead spot in the mid-range? There's nothing in the pipe. As you can see, you'd think that with nothing to restrict the flow, this pipe would outperform any muffler. If you look in this muffler, there's most certainly something in there. Baffles. In addition to reducing noise, baffles also reduce harmonic reversion in the exhaust system. Reversion is what causes that dead spot in the mid-RPM range. So what is harmonic reversion, you may ask? It can be pretty hard to explain, and since you can't see what's going on in your exhaust pipe, it's really hard to demonstrate. So I'm going to revert to my childhood and use this slinky toy to illustrate. By the way, you may have used one of these to study waves in your high school physics class. Keep in mind that this is greatly simplified, but it's a good way to visualize what's going on in the exhaust system. Let's say this slinky is your drag pipe. We've suspended it with a camera shooting down into it. We're also shooting with another camera turned on its side. If I tweak one end of the slinky, a wave travels to the other end and then reflects right back. It keeps doing that at the resonant frequency of the spring until the energy of the wave is dissipated. Well, when your exhaust valves open, and a pulse of pressure comes out, the column of air in the pipe acts much the same way as the slinky. That pulse travels down the pipe, and when it reaches the end, the change in impedance from the inside of the pipe to the outside air is enough to reflect some of the pulse right back up the pipe. At a specific RPM, which depends on the resonant frequency of the pipe, this return pulse of pressure will arrive back at your exhaust port just in time to interfere with the next load of exhaust gas coming out. That reduces the amount of spent charge you can get out of the combustion chamber. That makes your engine run rich, and that reduces the power at that particular RPM. That's drag pipe sag. So how do we solve this problem? Well, here's the easiest way to get rid of drag pipe sag. Get rid of the drag pipes. Works every time. The baffles in this muffler break up the pressure pulses and absorb their energy so they don't return up the exhaust pipe. Let's go back to the slinky and see how that works. We're putting these paper towels in the coils of the slinky to represent baffles in a muffler. Now when we send a pulse down the pipe, it pretty much fizzles out. 
the energy of the pulse is absorbed and dissipated, so the reversion problem is greatly reduced. Let's see that again in slow motion. It's easy to see the difference. Reason notwithstanding, what if you just have to have these drag pipes? They're just so cool. Can't we make them work somehow? The answer is that there are some things that you can do that will help, but none of them totally cure the problem, and some of them compromise the overall performance of the bike. The most effective fixes involve modification of the drag pipes. After all, tuning the carburetor to fix an exhaust problem is somewhat like putting your arm in a sling to cure a headache, but let's give it a try. We'll start by increasing the main jet air bleed. SNS Super E and G carbs manufactured after 2004 are machined to use an SNS main jet as an air bleed for the main system. The factory air bleed has a 40 thousandths diameter orifice. We'll replace that with a jet with a 60 thousandths hole in it. Placing a larger jet here will bleed more air into the main system, which delays the main system from feeding fuel until a higher RPM is reached. That should help with that rich condition in the mid-range. Let's see what effect the larger air bleed has on performance. It appears to have helped some. At least the misfire is gone, but there's still a big mid-range dip. So although helpful, the air bleed is no silver bullet. We may be able to improve the mid-range just by leaning out the overall jetting. We have to be careful because if we put jets in that are too small, it could make the other areas of the RPM range dangerously lean, but let's give it a try. We're replacing the factory 29.572 .5 jetting with a 2866 combination to lean out the overall mixture, so let's see what happens. The results are a little better in the mid-range and overall. As long as we don't go too far, leaner jets will help a little. However, there is still a major dip in the mid-range. The word on the street is that the reversion problems can be solved by installing a one quarter inch bolt through the pipe a couple inches from the end. The theory is that the bolt will break up the pressure pulses without restricting the flow of exhaust gases very much. The encouraging thing about this approach is that we're making changes to the exhaust system to solve an exhaust problem. Back to the dyno to see what happens. It appears there is some improvement in the mid-range and the bolt in the pipe didn't reduce the overall performance significantly, so this may be a useful tool to combat drag pipe sag, even if it does chirp a bit but the critical mid-range still isn't as good when compared to a mufflered exhaust system. But if you're willing to settle for less performance to achieve a look and sound, this is an option. Here's a variation on the bolts, thumb screws, and these are even adjustable. Back to the dyno to see what happens. We did two runs. One with the thumb screws 90 degrees to the exhaust flow and one at about 45 degrees. The thumb screw at 90 degrees showed a fairly significant improvement in the mid-range. The thumb screw at 45 degrees is similar to the bolt, and like the bolt in the pipe, the thumb screws didn't significantly reduce the overall performance. It still isn't as good as a mufflered exhaust system, but it does help. Let's look at another popular method of dealing with drag pipe sag. Installing a set of baffles in your drag pipes. Sounds like a bad idea, but let's try it. Baffles for drag pipes are an off-the-shelf item from many parts suppliers. These particular baffles are probably the worst case scenario because they're wrapped with a fiberglass packing. Back to the DynaJet for a reality check. Well, the bike is definitely quieter, but those baffles really did a number on the performance. We can't even rev it to 4500 RPM, and we made a pathetic 35 horsepower. The AFR trace shows that the mixture went really rich. 
If you think about it, placing something as large as these baffles in an exhaust pipe really cuts down on the cross-sectional area available for exhaust to flow. They're really restrictive. It doesn't make sense to invest in a performance carburetor and possibly performance cams and then stuff a baffle up your pipe. To be fair, let's jet the carb really lean to see if it can be improved. It's so bad it couldn't get much worse. We're taking the main jet down to a 60 thousandths orifice. This run appears to be a little better, but certainly not acceptable performance. Well, we got it up to about 5,500 RPM, but it still made less than 45 horsepower. Let's just say that this is not a recommended option. As we've shown, the best way to jet for drag pipes is not to jet for them at all. It's hard to solve an exhaust problem with carburetor jetting, so our recommendation is to install an exhaust system with mufflers. You have less problems in general, and you'll enjoy all around better performance. We've shown a couple of ways to try to get around the drag pipe problems, and of course there are other partial remedies that you can try. But as we've shown, none of them is completely satisfactory. If you decide that the look and sound of drag pipes are really what you want, and that you're willing to sacrifice drivability and mid-range performance to have them, well, less power to you. We hope this video has been informative and helps you not only jet your SNS carburetor, but also to make more informed exhaust selections. And of course, we hope to see you on the road, not on the side of it. Mm -hmm.